Welcome back to Scholarship Cafe. It's been a while, isn't it? My name is Olumi Waikbala Javi. I'm the founder of Scholarship Cafe. Good news, barely a week ago, I partnered with um, Lemonade Finance, a fintech company with a main focus of ensuring borderless transfer of money across the world. Personally, I've used this app. Um, apart from the fact that there is no sending fee, the sign up and phoning your wallet takes less than five minutes. The app is easy to use, it's safe, it's flexible, and imagine 24 7 customer care support service. So, what are you waiting for? Sign up and enter my referral code OLUDIY, uh, O L U D I Y, to get a 10% cash back on your transfer from Canada to Nigeria to Kenya, Ghana, UK, and the rest of Europe. Compared to other platforms, I strongly recommend Lemonade Finance for your transactions. In my last video, I address eight common mistakes you need to avoid in your CV. So today, I will be talking about how to write your own catchy and well-tailored CV. Hey! If you're considering grad school, postdoctoral research positions, as well as faculty, your academic CV must be on point, well detailed, easy to read, convincing, and impressive. There is no one way of writing your own academic CV. However, there are basic sections expected to be in your CV. The first section is the content details and information. Include your name in bold form, big and bold, like two to three or four fonts more than the rest of your CV, contact address, phone number, as well as email address. Any other details outside these are unnecessary and could be distracting. I understand that you may have two or even three phone numbers and email addresses. You do not have to state everything here. Rather include one of them that is valid, reliable, and you do check often. A lot of people do ask me if it's okay to use their own address Instead of work address, the choice is yours. You may consider using your work or institutional address if you often receive emails or correspondence through them. It also shows your professional affiliation on your CV. The second part is your research interest. I consider this as a first approach or something that is catchy when you write a professor for the first time. Research interest helps the future lab to understand your research focus and how they can marry that with what they do. Uh, a lot of people do replace this with profile summary, which I do not recommend. It's important to list two or four research interests which aligns with the group you are writing. For instance, I've always listed medical mycology and antifungal as my research interest. So any lab or position that deals with fungi would understand that this is my area of specialization or focus. The next section is your education. List your degrees in chronological orders with the type of degree, the field of study, the name of school, university, location, graduation year, and thesis tied to. You can also include the name of your supervisor, your chair, or committee members. For example, PhD, microbiology, Castro Institute of Technology, Germany, 2019, my thesis tied to light sensing in Alton area at another. Um, remember, you do not have to list your high school or elementary school year. It is not necessary. It is even distracting. Okay, the fourth section is honors, awards, fellowship, and grants. It is advisable to list all your awards, honors in reverse chronological orders, starting from the most recent. For each of the entry, include the name of the award, institution, and date awarded. You can include a short description of the award and the monetary value. For instance, a one-time award of 20,000 Naira or 20,000 Canadian dollars for masters. Uh, the fifth section is your research experience. Your research experience or hands-on experience is one thing every supervisor or grad school admission committee are looking for in your CV. A lot of people do mix this up with um, work experience. Your research experience must align with a department of future lab in question or future group or future professor that you want to write 
Two, you do not want to apply for a biochemistry position with a degree in finance. So if you have a broad research experience, typical of someone with a PhD, you may need to divide this section into smaller categories. So for each entry, include a title of research project, the university, the date, and your supervisor's name. Use action verbs. In my last video, I talked about action verbs. Use action verbs. List all your achievements, including skills acquired during this period of time, e.g. performed or analyzed or investigated, etc., etc. You can see that, you can check my, um, the, my last video for that. The next section in your CV um, is teaching experience for each entry, if many, list your course title, name of university, department, date, or time, it is important to state whether you taught undergrad or grad student or you are even a guest lecturer. Um, the seventh section, which is often optional, is work experience. Only include your work experience if it has something to do with the position in question. Applying for a graduate or postdoctoral position in biology with work experience in the banking industry is not only counterproductive but also um, disjointed. The eighth section is your publications. All published work must appear in reverse chronological orders with dates, confirm the reference and style peculiar to your field. You can list articles that has been accepted for publication as in press. Um, articles already submitted for publication can be listed as submitted. Do not list theses or articles submitted on ResearchGate, which has not yet been peer reviewed. ResearchGate is not a journal. Consider bolding your name on each publication, especially when you have multiple authors on the same paper. So the next section that must be included in your CV is presentation and invited lectures. Indicate the name of presentation, name of conference, location, and date. The next section that you must include in your CV is professional development or trainings. Um, list professional trainings you had, it is important that these trainings are related to the specific field or postdoctoral position if you are applying for or faculty. Include the name of the training, the workshop, the seminars, the name of the organization that conducted the training, the date and the location. The next section that must be in your CV should be your professional affiliations. List membership in local and international professional bodies and organizations. Most of them are actually free. For each of them, state your position. Probably you are a member or you are the president of the organization. The name of the organization and the validity of membership, e.g. member American Society for Nutrition 2012 to 2021 or till present. And the twelfth section should be your professional service. List all activities which you have contributed to the development of a body, a department, a professional community. For instance, I review with a Elsevier, uh, I list that in my CV. So if you are a reviewer for a journal, kindly of state the name of the journal. The next important section is community service and volunteering. A lot of people do not include this in their CV, but it's very important because the graduate admission committee or professor might be interested in your activities to the community, probably outside the university or even within the university community, especially when it concerns the growth of orders. List all activities and include the name of the organization, the location, and date. The 14th section it, that must be in your CV is mentoring activities. If you are applying for faculty or postdoctoral positions, I strongly recommend including this section in your CV. List the name of your mentees, project if applicable, location, and date. The next section is your language. Um, I mean, I, I listed it in my CV as languages. List all foreign language applicable to you, including the name of the language and the level of um, fluency, probably competent or average or beginner. Yeah. So the last section in your CV is your references. A lot of people do write reference on request Personally, I do not see any crime if you list your reference in your CV. List 
all references in order of importance starting from the most recent person that can comment on your expertise and strong points for each of those reference include the name the title the organization the mailing address the cell phone number an email address also include a short statement that shows the relationship that you have with your reference e.g bachelor masters or phd supervisor now that you're familiar with what is expected in your cv let's go over formatting an organization and get number one do not use acronym and abbreviations they may be ambiguous and misinterpreted number two use 11 or 12 point fonts avoid long sentences and loose words your name should be in bold letters and the fonts could be bigger than the rest of the cv if you are a fresh graduate only list the sections and headings applicable to you do not be scared do not be terrified do not be timid if you like this video kindly hit the like button share with your friends subscribe and drop your questions in the comment section